Hey, everybody, welcome to Muscular Development's Chicago Pro Preview. And for this, I had to go all the way to Great Britain to get this man, Giles Tiger Thomas, joining us from Tiger Towers. How are you, sir? Ron, it's uh, beautiful to hear it. Tiger Towers. <laughs> yeah, beautiful day in the neighborhood. So this yep. is, is going to be a really good show. Uh, let's start with the elephant in the room, shall we? Willie Winkler. I got in trouble for saying Roly. Somebody corrected me on YouTube. It's I did. No, someone else did. Someone from his country, I think. I said, well, it's R-O-E. What do you expect me to say? Mm -hmm. is, I know his name is Rulo, Rulov, R-U-L-O-V-E. That's Etienne. the actual Etienne, Etienne which is also his sister's name, his manager, Etienne. But uh, yeah, Roly Winkler, uh, I was hearing about him jumping into this show two or three weeks ago. Uh, didn't It wasn't confirmed, so I didn't say anything, especially uh, on the record. But uh, this really makes things exciting because... There's a lot of good guys in the open we're going to talk about, but Hunter Labrada was definitely the favorite going into the show. And you know what? He still might be. He still might be. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what he's going to look like. We don't know what Rolly's going to look like. But Hunter was, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's Hunter's show. He's going to win. And now with Rolly, it just makes things a little more interesting. Um, first of all, you knew, uh, we all knew Rolly had to qualify somewhere. Where did you think he was going to do it? Did you think he was going to do it at one of these last couple of shows in Europe? I, well, if you, I had him on Globe Muscle with uh, William Bonack uh, a couple of months ago. And I, I don't think I actually said, Chicago, I might have said, I might have dropped it and he kind of just, he had a stony face, but he was, I, I kind of had a feeling, I did, I'll be honest, I did have a feeling he was going to do this show um, because he had to, he had to do this one or Tampa or, and um, yeah, I'm just so excited that he's doing it because um, like 2018, like we, I mean, bodybuilders, you can go six months and they can forget about you, but Rowley hasn't had, he had third place at the 2018 Olympia, could have beat Phil Heath. Let's, you know, that's, that's, you know, he looks sensational there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 2019, it was a disastrous year. He had the knee problems, he had the, the, the food poisoning in India and all, there was all sorts of reasons why. Still got fifth at Olympia, even though he was at like 50%. I think he was 50%. Um, 2020, couldn't even compete. And then he comes to, I just, like you said, it's, it's such a, if he, I mean, he has to win this. He has to yeah. win this. But I think I think the most exciting thing is, is how is he going to look? Because when I had him on, um, it was when he was stuck in, um, what's that island he was stuck on? Curacao, the one he lives on? Or was he on some uh, other? He was, it was the pandemic. It was when I had him on with William Bonnack on Globe Muscle and I had him on by himself. Right. And he was saying, he says, oh, when I was going to Olympia, so I was looking my best ever. And I was like, wow, your best ever. And he says, yeah. He says, he said, I was, you know, I couldn't compete in the 2020 Olympia, yeah. but I would have been my best ever. And I was like, wow, okay. He says, my waist is smaller. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I just um, I, I'm I'm a huge Roly fan, as you know. Yeah. And um, I just and to be honest, I've been hyping him in my MD Global Muscle Buzz column, and um, I I think I think he I I think sure. if he if he brought it together like Rami did last year, I think he could be Mr. Olympia this year. Um, I mean, you know that there were arguments 2018 when he took third. There were arguments he was good enough to beat Sean that year, Sean Roden. I mean, it was a different look. Yep. He's much different type of physique, but man, he was on. That's the best. I, I guess the I have I, I you you've probably been to some shows that I haven't. I know that that Arnold Australia that he won, where he had been, would he drop like twenty pounds in two weeks or something from Columbus to Australia? Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger said when he on stage, he says, "I heard you drop twenty pound," but uh, Ruley said it was fourteen um, okay. because the, the two because Ruley was two seventy eight at that Arnold Classic, and I remember I was sat with you. And as he walked on stage, I went, no, nah, he's done. He's too heavy. Because if Ruley's over 260, he goes thick in the waist. Yeah, but yeah. when he dropped, well, actually, it's probably more like 265. But when he goes below that, yeah. all that happens is the waist comes in and everything just transforms. So he, he can't be too heavy or he will blow this. He will get beaten by somebody that arguably is not as good as him. The only person that can beat Ruley is himself. So if he doesn't turn up, with that small waist like he did, um, you know, but the thing is, he, he stresses a lot. He's a big stressor. So with the quarters on, plus he hasn't competed, so the pressure's really going to be on. So I just hope he can stay calm. I hope he's around, under 265, and I just really hope that um, he brings in that small waist and the, and the abs are nice and flat, because like you saw at the Arnold Australia, when that waist is small, he looks he looks like a cartoon cut. He beat all of them. He beat Dexter, he beat William, all of them. Yeah, and I mean... I believe the uh, the Olympia in 2019 was in October. It wasn't way, you know, nothing. December was last year. So yeah. that means it's been close to two years since this guy's been on stage. That's a long time to be away. You know, luckily he hasn't, 
he doesn't suffer the same way others do as far as the eyes of the fans because he's still tremendously popular. But, yeah, he can't be taking years off like that and expect, you know. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, do you, what's his coaching situation? You know who he's working with these days? Hang on, hang on. He technically didn't take a year off because he was ready to compete. Oh, okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? So he just he didn't get to step on stage, but he still was training and prepping. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So really, he's not like, say, where Phil took a full year off and was kind of not dieting or anything. So so really, has he lost any momentum or has he just had, or has he just been steadily improving during this time? What do you think? Mm. Well, I mean, improving. When you say improving, what does he need to imp- It's not like he needs to be any bigger. He had all the size he needed years ago. I, I don't know what he can do to improve. You know, when I look at his physique, what would I like to see more of? With me and Roley's physique, it's always quad separation. That's all I ever want out of that guy is I would love to see some deep, deep cuts in those quads. They're enormous. And his upper body is so round and full and bubbly. Man, if he, if he ever had some really crisp, deep leg separation, perfect. He'd be, could, could he do what Rami did last year? Only if he has the Chad. Does he have the Chad? I don't know. No, but I mean, I mean, if he really, if he really made the kind of differences in his physique, say that Rami made from the Arnold Classic to the Olympia last year, yeah. if Ruli did that, I mean, it's a big if. I realize it's a big if. But if he could, then, I mean, no one's, certainly no one's stopping him in Chicago. It's going to be like an easy check for him. But it's going right. to, like I said, I, I keep pushing this. I think he could be the dark horse for the Olympia. If, if, if he hasn't regressed and he's actually managed to improve, um, I think even if he's at the standard of the 2018 Olympia, imagine if he came back with a smaller waist and he was five. Because thing is, he has done this before. I remember in 2014 to 2016, um, he got That's bigger. Right. But then I saw him at Body Power Pro. I was sat with Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sat with Ronnie. I went, Ronnie, look. I said, oh, my God. I said, how has he done this? Because everything was bigger. But he brought the waist in. And that was the first time that I ever thought it was possible to improve your physique, come in bigger and actually come in with a smaller waist. So he, he has good form for doing these kinds of transformations so i just fingers crossed that he doesn't walk out and we go oh he's blown it again and he's missed his chance and we don't see him at the olympia because i mean what would he do if he didn't qualify here would it what would he uh, was oh, i mean you can't have you can't have oh. really wanting to do the olympia and not do it but then again if he doesn't win chicago is he is he good enough to do it you know it's if he doesn't win chicago he could go to there's a texas pro there's the show in alicante which i think is the same weekend so he's gonna have to pick one of those yeah. And, and then Tampa Pro, and that's it. He would only have two more chances after Chicago to either, uh, I don't know if he, if he, if he can get enough points, because some of these other guys uh, like Shaban, they're way up in the points from, from these shows. So I don't know if he'd be able to catch up to them, but we'll see. Uh, let's move on to Hunter, because Hunter, we know he's not going to be out of shape. I, you know he's not going to be. He's going to be dead on. And this kid, I call him a kid because he's still in his 20s, he uh, last year when he won the Tampa Pro, he had only really had a few months of good training because he had the shoulder surgery. And I think he had told me he had only had like maybe four months, three months of good training before he started prep for that show uh, for all the shows. I think he was planning on doing New York and that got pushed back, but he's had a full year now. So, uh, you know, we, we look, we see he puts he's he's somebody who doesn't hide away. He puts up a lot of progress pictures, videos, so we could see the improvements. Um I'd like to see 100% Hunter against 100% Roly and see see how that looks, how they compare. Yeah, two very, very different types of physiques. Well, I mean, I had Hunter on Globe Muscle a few weeks ago, and um, I think I had it in my head. I think he's. I think he said he was two four. Uh, uh, it's around this, like two. He said at the Olympia, I was two forty five or two forty seven. It was one of, and he said my fasted weight today, at so many weeks out, was two fifty eight or something. Uh-huh. So. Give or take, he's he. It looks like he might be about ten pounds. But if you work out the, you know, about how much you'll lose and how far out he was, right. I think he's going to be about ten pounds heavy this year. And like you said, his conditioning is superb. Um, he was uh, eighth place at the Olympia last year. He yeah. won his pro debut. Um, I, for me, he's actually I. Well, we'll come to the next guy, but oh, I think oh. somebody else could potentially beat him. Um, I mean, if yeah, but 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 Hunter, yeah. Hunter. Um, also, have you ever seen anyone with quads as hard as him at 10 weeks out? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's there's a few people over the years who maintain very lean condition, but he's somebody who clearly gets ready ahead of time and then he can sort of gradually coast into the show, which is uh, the best way to do it if, if possible. I, I, I think he's uh, I think he's got a really good chance, especially if Roly's not 100 percent and Roly is such a such a gamble. I wish 
I'd like to say Roley's going to be this and that, but you never know with you never know which role you're going to get when he's on. He's deadly. He's as he's good enough to be Mr. Olympia potentially. He's better than any of these guys in the, that we're talking about. I'm, I'm just talking about a proven track record. He's a he's a veteran. He's been up on the Olympia and the Arnold stage many times. He's won a bunch of shows. He's so massive and so round. You know, Hunter's got a lot of things going for him too, especially. Uh, you know, presentation is one thing where yes, I think that's he beats he beats almost everybody in this show, if not everybody, on yeah. presentation. Well, in the open for sure, everyone I'm looking at, because you know he's got a good got a good coach that Leela Brother guy. Yes, I tell you what makes me um, Hunter could actually win it because you know what makes me nervous going back to Ruli is that mm-hmm. he always looks better at this. If you look at Prague, that was after the Olympia. If you look at the Arnold Australia, that was after the Arnold. He always gets better. He always seems to get on stage, get nervous for the big shows mess it up and then he, he always looks completely sensational like he did when he won Prague, right. when he won uh, the Arnold Australia. So maybe if, if, if Ruley does that again and Hunter's absolutely bang on, which I think he will be, then yeah, Hunter could win this. Um, and the thing is, imagine for Hunter going into the Olympia beating a big name like Ruley. I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be a huge feather in his cap. Oh man, you know, that's so far he hasn't really beaten any big quote unquote big names. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking when I say big names, I mean like top five, top sixty Olympia. Yeah. yeah, if he beats Roley, that's his stock is going to rise fast because Roley's no unless Roley's way off and Roley takes like third or fourth or fifth, mm. which could you never know. You never know what what's going to happen on show day with anybody because there's yeah. a lot of variables involved. But Hunter, man, he's got a great shot. Uh, you know what? I'd like to see Hassan Mustafa. Oh, come on, Hassan, come in just shredded, dry, peeled, man. Imagine that. Imagine if if Hassan puts it together for this show. It's going to be crazy because he's been third, third at Indy, third at New York. I think he was third in Puerto Rico, too. He's like the third place poster boy this year. But, yep. And it's just because he's not hard enough from the back, especially if he was that extra level of condition. He's got so much muscle. He's he's the only one on that stage that we're talking about that has the same type of muscle as Roly, that real round, full hanging muscle. Um, but yeah, what do you, I, I guess it's just spe- idle speculation, but what do you think? Hassan, can he, can he do it? Well, Hassan, I thought looked at the New York pro. I, I could see straight away. He'd made improvements over last year. There's more detail in his shoulders, his chest, his back was better. Um, the waist was, you know, better, but, um, I could see straight away he'd made improvements, but it still wasn't enough to really, for someone of his potential to be going in and winning a show like this easy. The second one, um, the second show, he kind of took a step back and I thought, oh, he's starting to regress now. And then at Puerto Rico, I thought he looked, I'm trying to think if he looked better than he did at New York Pro, whether it was just the lighting or not, but I thought he looked really good. So I'm hoping he continues that trajectory of improvements because I don't know. I just, I want to see him at his best. I want to see him at his best because like you said, I would love to see him next to Ruli and Hunter um, because I think we all want to see him at the Olympia because we, we were saying what, like two years ago that, um, you know, it, it, at his best, this guy's a, a top six Olympian. Yeah. I, I, my only concern with him is he's doing all these shows and I don't know some people that works out well and some people it doesn't work out well. Yeah. Some people's bodies can't handle being on prep that long. I don't know where he falls into that equation because I haven't seen him. I wasn't at Puerto Rico. So like, like you, I can't really comment on better or worse. I'm going off pictures online. Um, but man, if, if he does tighten up, you know, he could be, he could win this. He could win, especially if, if Hunter's off. If Roley, you never know. You never know. So we're not, we're not at the end of this. Are we going to do like our top five in order? We'll see. We'll yeah. See. <laughs> we'll get roasted. Uh, let's talk about uh, Shaban, Muhammad Shaban. Definitely a breakout for this season. Like I said, a couple of years ago when I saw this guy, I was not impressed at all. I thought that show he won in was at Portugal. Portugal, 2019. I saw, I was like, he didn't even deserve to win that. And then he's at the Olympia. And I'm like, this guy shouldn't even be on the Olympia stage. He's yeah. horrible. I was just, I was brutal to this guy. And now uh, this year, very, very, I haven't been at any of the shows that he's competed at this season. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, this is my first time seeing him since that 2019 Olympia. And he's a totally different bodybuilder. He's much fuller, rounder. Uh, he's, he's not lacking anything. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discount him for the win either. If he really puts it all together for this show. I know, what, yeah. Sorry, the first show. I mean, what was the what was the first show we did? I, I can't think about it. Oh, Cali Pro did the Cali, Cali Pro because he obviously right. from California, he lives out there. Right. Um, and I, I was I was like, whoa, because I had him on Globe Muscle, and he said I'm going to be like 25 pounds heavy, something ridiculous, a ridiculous right. figure like that. And I was like, really? 
Yeah. He's like, yes, I was 220 at the Olympia. Now I'll be 245. Or I was like, okay, you know, like, yeah, whatever, okay, whatever. whatever, dude, whatever. And he came on and his physique was just incredible. But he was like, if you look at the readable bicep, I mean, it looked, it was poor. I mean, there was zero detail going on. Mm. Um, you know, from, like, from front, he's vascular. He was tight, but he lacked separation. There was, there was, everything just looked blurry, you know, and kind of like, just didn't, there was no separation of quality. And I was like, oh, okay. And then at Puerto Rico, I mean, he took second there to Akeem Williams and looked absolutely fantastic, made some serious improvements. And I just, I'm hoping that we see something better again um, because, you know, he's got so much thickness. He's almost like, he's got kind of like Hassan Mustafa level thickness or Ruli level thickness. I mean, he's really, and he's, he's very complete. Um, so I just, I would love to see him just a little bit tighter again than he was in Puerto Rico because, um, like he said, I think he's, I, I might have put him in my, next month's column saying he's maybe ah. possibly the uh, most improved athlete of 2021 because if you say like i remember the 2019 olympia walked out for his individual comparison i think you and me went uh, took a bathroom break <laughs> it was like now, yeah who's this, who's this joker what's he doing what's here? he doing up here you know but yeah. he said he was sick apparently before that olympia he was like he got very sick but even still i mean he was he was kind of one of those guys that was kind of making up the numbers but if he qualifies for the Olympia this year, this guy ain't going to make up the numbers. I mean, he's going to be a real threat. I mean, he's, um, I mean, talk about improvements. I mean, absolutely sensational. I mean, if you ever see legs like that, mm. I mean, he's everything yeah. thick and round, trained by Charles Glass. He's, is he prepped by Andrew Vu? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, back at the, uh, I wasn't at the Cali Pro and I was going off pictures, but the only reason, you know, Patrick Moore won fair and square. He was in much better condition. He's yeah. an excellent bodybuilder in his own right, but we all have our own preferences for physiques. I tend to prefer the thicker look and Muhammad had it at that show, which is why I thought they were both very, very good. And I don't think it would have been a shame if Muhammad had won that show. Um, I, I like his physique a lot. I'm really curious. I'm really excited to see him in person for the first time because so far I'm going off things on my phone and my computer. It's not the same. So I I'm really looking forward to seeing this guy. Next do up. Do yeah, you ahead. think he could be a dark horse for the win? I mean, is that is that completely too out there? That could he no, could he could he actually know. win this? We'll know when they walk out. I mean, I, I haven't seen Hunter since last year. I, I know he's improved too, and I've never seen Muhammad the way he looks now. This is going to be a hell of a top five, top yeah. six. It really is. This is a this is one of the best shows, if not the best. This might be the best lineup we've had this season. Um, yep. You know, in in any of these shows leading into the, which is great, and it, it sometimes it. It's, it's good that the, the point system, which I hated in years past, I thought it was stupid, but it does bring out um, more talent as you get closer to the Olympia, because now the guys are all panicking on oh, I need to qualify. So these shows in the past might not have had such great lineups, but now they're coming out of the woodwork. Like w when would we have gotten Roly Winkler to do the Chicago pro, you know, yeah. ne never, but he needs to get it. He needs to get the Olympia. Um, next guy I want to talk about Max Charles. Uh, Max competed four or five times last year. I was at, I think, I think it was at every show he did. And he was, you know, except for Cali Pro. And that guy was, you know, you were at the Arnold last year and that was some of the best condition I've ever seen. Like, wow. Yeah, crazy, crazy. You, you remember when he walked out? When we walked out and I just went, fuck <laughs> it oh, just, I've never seen Max like this because if you look at how he looked the year before, you, uh, and it, you know, cause he's over 40, you know, he's around 40, isn't he? And I thought, yeah. okay, here's a guy maybe starting to slide. He works with Milo Sarchev, turns up to the Arnold Classic and he's like, along with Morgan Asti, he's the hardest guy in the lineup. I mean, yeah. I just, all I can remember was these striations in his chest. It looked like it was so like, it was splintering. And then the vast, the thick veins running over his abs. And I just thought, I mean, as a first impression, even as he, even before he even hit a pose, I was just like, Phew. I was like, wow. So, um, but he's, he's in a tough show. He's in a very tough show here. Um, and I just hope, because the thing is, he will have to be kind of in that same sort of condition to get any kind of a look in here. But um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, if he makes top five, top six, that's going to be an absolute huge achievement. And like you said, this is possibly the best lineup we've seen this year. Yeah. You know, I had uh, Milos and Max on the Ron line. I think it's going to air the day before this airs. Wow. Hey, you know, they're training for the win, of course. And uh, yep. that, that's what he wants. I hope he gets a really good look. I hope he gets a really high placing. He's a hard worker, mm -hmm. uh, quiet, soft-spoken, doesn't talk, doesn't talk a lot of trash, obviously. Um, just a, just a, a workhorse. Does a lot of shows, and he's consistent. I've never seen him out of shape once in all the years. I've seen Max. I've probably seen him in 20 or 25 pro shows at least, and he's, he's never been off, ever. Yeah. Uh, next guy, big apologies, because I've been saying his name wrong. 
Brett Wilkin. Did you know it was Wilkin? I've been saying Wilkins for the longest time. Wilkin. Wilkin. Were you yeah, saying Wilkin? I had him on Globe Muscle last week. Right. So you were saying it correct, Wilkin? Yeah. I don't even know that name. We have, I've heard the name Wilkins many times. Anyway, <laughs> so Brett was a 212 two years ago. Uh, we made a mini clip out of it, him explaining, because what he put on? 20, 30, 30. 30 pounds. He's put on 30 yeah. pounds in two he years. Said, he said he reckons he'll be about uh, around 240 on stage where he was 211 when he did in 2019. So he went classic at the Junior USA's in 2018, yeah. uh, 212 in 2019, and he's come back 30 pounds. Do you know what? This is actually the guy I think I am most excited about, apart from Ruli. Yeah. I think this is the one I am most looking forward to seeing on the live stream because, sorry, go on. I'll, and I'll talk. No, no, I, I agree because I, I don't, I barely remember him from years ago. I barely remember him. He did not make much of an impression on me as a 212. Uh, probably was, probably was very much outmasked by the other shorter guys. But uh, man, he's, he's at that Armbrust Pro Gym where Phil Heath trains. Tons of pros out there. Dorian Haywood trains there. Uh, Brett and his wife, Ivana, Adam Young, but, uh, and that new kid, Martin Fitzwater, I think that's his training partner. Yes. Yeah. So I've been looking at all the progress pictures and this, this Brett is no joke. He's, he's a very big, big dude and very complete, very conditioned. Looks like it's coming in perfectly. I think he's got a, a really good chance at first call out and he's, yep. he, he could beat, if he beats any of the names that we're talking about here, that's a huge win. Cause we're talking about guys that have been in many, many open shows most of these guys have been in the Arnold, the Olympia, uh, multiple times. So, yeah, Brett, I, I, I'm very excited to see how this how this young guy looks. I, to be honest, I think he's. Am I allowed to say white Sean Roden? You, you can. I believe you can okay. say that. I, honestly, I just said it on Global. He is. He is. I look at his physique and I look at the, the proportions and the symmetry and the shape and the conditioning. And I tell you what, it was when I saw a guest posing he did with Nick Walker and Sean Clarida, obviously, because they're all Matt Jansen athletes. Yeah. And I saw him guest pose and I just thought, do you know what? I mean, Nick Walker is not blowing him off the stage here. And this right. guy is, I just, I think he's, I think he's going to be the biggest, probably the biggest talking point after this contest, because if he's as good as, he, as I think he is, um, I think he's going to be, I would be unbelievably shell-shocked if he wasn't top five. And I think potentially... I think he could be top three. And you know what? I actually prefer his physique to Hunter's. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, think he's better. Than, honestly, my, for, for my preference for physique, yeah. I, mean, I think Hunter's incredible. But I tell you what, Brett is 100% going to, if he turns up as good as I think he will, I think he's going to rub out some very, very big names. And like you said, with um, the stock rising, you know, with yeah. Hunter beating Rooley, I yeah. think his stock is going to, and the thing is, he's a newcomer, so he's got nothing to lose. You know, he's got everything to gain by doing this show. Dude, anything so, better than last place is a win, basically. Yeah, no, I, honestly, I, I, I really, really got high hopes for this guy. I've got, I, I think he's, um, I was so, and I couldn't believe his energy at three weeks out on the on Globe Muscle. I just, this guy is fresh. He looks, he look, you know, he looks, he looks good. He's, he's focused. He's got that. He's had a few pep talks from Phil Heath. You can tell about mindset. And um, yeah, I'm, I think this is the one him and, yeah. I mean, he's one of a few guys in this contest that I am so excited to see. And I can't wait to see what he's going to be. That tiny little waist. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know. I'm not saying he has a better physique than Hunter, but structurally, Brett's got a very, very good structure. He's he's got a, a better proportion of the of the torso to limbs and all that. You know what I mean? Whereas uh, Hunter has a little longer weight, longer torso. So yeah, Brett, Brett, good luck, Brett. Uh, I'm very eager to see how you do. And you know, now, do you know what? With Brett, he doesn't have a bad compulsory pose. Hmm, wow. Well, there you go. I mean, if he's if he's Third, if he makes top three, I mean, that's, that's instant, you know, he's going to be beating some very big names. So best yeah. of luck, best of luck to him. Another guy you had on global very recently, MD global muscle was Joe Mackey out of Texas. Yep. Joe is another guy who put on some size since I saw him last. What's he, did he, what did he put on like 20 pounds or 15 pounds? Or something? I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be around 20, 25 pounds. The thing is, you don't know how, when they dry out, but I mean, he is going to be markedly bigger. I mean, maybe minimum 15, maybe 20 pounds heavier in better condition than when he did, uh, when he last competed, because he didn't have a very good season last year. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, obviously he's got the same uh, team as Rami, as in he's staying at Dennis James's house. He's got uh, Chad Nichols looking over him, who I spoke to last night. And, um, and sorry, go on. I'm getting yeah, very no, excited. That's, I mean, that's, him on. that's it, because, you know, a lot of times these guys, they'll keep doing the same things over and over and not realize changing something up could take them to the next level. 
And then you work with someone like Chad and Dennis James, and they're going to have you doing, Dennis will have them training differently. Chad's going to have them doing different things with the nutrition. And it's already, you already see, uh, I just saw a video. What does he do? Is Gasp? Is that who he does videos for? No, I don't know. I just saw one of his videos and he was looking freakish. Yeah. So big and round and vascular. Uh, I, I don't know how he's going to do. We'll see. You know, he's, he's definitely got the size to match up with most of these guys for sure. But uh, another guy who has a legitimate chance, especially if he comes in 100% razor sharp and any of these guys we're talking about don't, he could get past some of these guys for sure. Have you, have you seen he did, um, he was doing a Ronnie Coleman 800 pound deadlift for two reps. The bar no. was like literally like bending. And then really, just, oh have a look, I, put, I, edited, I edited it in and he showed Ronnie on his phone and Ronnie was like, mm, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's the golden... You know, because if, if you deadlift and it's not 800 pounds, people go like, ah, Ronnie did 800. You have to do at least 800 or else you're you're nothing these days because of Ronnie. So <laughs> yeah. oh, good for you, Joe. You match Ronnie Cole. Strong guy. Strong guy. And I think, ah. um, and I've seen some pictures and he's looking so dry and so full. And yeah. and it was, um, I mean, it's very, very lucky to be able to be in that position where you've got someone like Dennis. Because Dennis James, he's, he's training him. He's, he's keeping his eye on him. He's, he's cooking his food for him. And he's, you know, and he's, it's it must be, I mean, I'd love to see whether Roley could do something like that because Roley is one of these ones that you know he looks sensational a week or two out and then he's, he gets very very I, I realized that when I spoke to Roley actually a couple of times this year he really he, he really lacks confidence and he gets very stressed before a show and I think that's the biggest enemy because um sorry anyway back to no that, you know I, I, that's that's a good point I think geez if Camp Menace could bring Roley in I mean wow we could they could do good things they could do good things for him so Joe Joe look forward to last guy I want to talk about in the open Another very big guy, the Jamaican tank, Philip Clayhar out of Land Lakes, Florida. So Phil was some guy we've seen. He does Tampa every year because he's, he's a Florida guy. And he's, I think the first couple of years, he got like second or third call out. And he was looking good. And he just, you know, didn't get much of a look because I think nobody knew who he was. But he's, he's been coming in tighter. Uh, he had a couple top five placings last season. He's definitely moving up the ranks. Really nice guy, him and his wife. I always talk to them at the shows. But Phil's a guy that nobody's talking about because he's not, you know, a social media whore like a lot of us. So <laughs> doesn't put out a ton of a uh, ton of content. But uh, Phil, Phil's going to be up there. Phil, Phil might get first call out, especially if he's in. He's about two seventy five, something like that on stage. Yeah, he's he's up in the two sixties, two seventies. A big guy. He's tall. He's wide. He's probably got one of the the best backs in the pro league. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that first show, and then he kind of he kind of slipped as he went on. What, what did he get? Was it third or fourth at Tampa? Or I think he got. I think he got fourth. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was a stacked lineup. You know, you had Hunter there. And so, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I think he struggled to make top six here, but I mean, he could, he'll look good. And I think he'll get a decent placing here. So he's, he's going to be a nice, he's, he's going to look, he's going to look good in this lineup. I think it's going to, he's, he's going to, you know, he's going he's gonna to look good. All right, let, let's do this before we move on. Let's give our top five. If everyone's in a hundred percent condition, that's a big, big if guys. And I've never actually seen that happen in the real world. Okay. Okay. Go for it. You you have to go first, so then I can, uh, ah, ah, then I can piggyback off your response. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the cat amongst the pigeons here. Yeah. Fifth place. No, go go first. Start with first place. Oh, first place, really. Yeah. Okay. Second yeah, place. I, th I think it'd just be disastrous if you didn't. I think second, Brett Wilkins. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think he's like I. I've just only like I said I haven't even seen him on stage yet, but I've just I'm really rooting for this guy. Okay. Third place, Hunter. Okay. Fourth, Hassan. Okay. Fifth, Shaban. I was say Shaban better be in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, okay. Uh, okay. fourth or fifth could be interchangeable because Hassan and uh, Shaban they're very very close, but um, obviously I haven't put Max Charles or. Um, who else in the? I didn't put Phil. Oh, Ma, um, yeah, I haven't put Max Charles in the top five, but um, there's a guy that can sneak in the top five easily. Absolutely, yeah. Um, if everyone's 100, you know, the only way, the only reason I don't always put Max up in the top predictions is we talked about in the in his uh, interview is quad sweep. I want I want to see quad more. I don't know if it's possible for him to get more quad sweep. Maybe Milos could kidnap him and do legs twice or three times a week for a few months. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What that upper body is insane on Max Charles. It's crazy. A little waist so wide so thick if he had quad sweep to match those wide shoulders and back my gosh he'd be winning arnold classics for sure all right my top five and then we'll move on 
I would go, Hunter, don't get mad. If Roley's on 100%, it's Roley number one. Hunter, mm, now I'm going to go. I don't want to have the same top five as you. Yeah. Uh, I would <laughs> probably go uh, Hassan, third. Yeah. Shaban, fourth. I don't know what Brett looks like. I'm going to put Max Charles in fifth. Okay. Brett could definitely surprise me and sneak anywhere in there. Who knows? But that, that's my top five. I think you're probably going to be right, but I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to be a bit different, I think, and just kind of uh, take a bit of a punt. I don't want to be, I don't want to be predictable, Ron, not saying you're predictable, but, uh, but I thought I knew, I had a feeling I knew what your top five would be. So I want to do something a little bit different just because uh, I look really cool if I'm right. I'd, I'd love to see Brett be the surprise of the show. I like yeah. it when, like when I was at the Indie Pro, I never heard of this Tony O'Burton guy in my life. I had no, like, who the hell is this? Yeah. And um, who was second? Uh, Nathan, yeah. Nathan Epler that won New York. He was second. I, I never heard of him in my life. Uh, Ball, Ballsmore, who was B Brian Ball, Brian. Anyway, those two guys I'd never heard of. And they really surprised the hell out of me. I like it when somebody I'm because I'm, we're just looking at these at these uh, sheets, the competitor list. And a lot of times I have no idea who these people are. So I just sort of like, you know, nah, whatever, never heard of, never heard of, never heard of this guy, never heard of that girl. But sometimes those are the ones that really blow the show away. All yep. right, two twelve. So last year, Keon Ooh. Pearson won this, but he didn't go to the Olympia and get a qualification, so he had to come back and try to get another qualification. So uh, I just saw him on Instagram. He's already looking so much drier, so much crisper than he was last year when he won this, and I think that picture was a few days ago. I love, he's got such an incredible physique. I've never seen him hundred percent condition dryness, but this looks like it might be the time when we finally see that. And wouldn't that be something? Cause boy, is that guy put together. I, I think you will see him better condition this year because that muscle he had last year was all such new muscle yeah. because he's so young. And wasn't he natural to like two years ago? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was like reflect what he was, it was classic. Remember we saw him at the Arnold classic and the classic. He was 180 pounds. I mean, but you, the beautiful structure. What probably one of, and any, and then remember what he did between then the New York Pro. He just like this physique came from no. I mean, yeah. he had a great physique at the Arnold, and then he went and won the New York Pro, and his physique just transformed, just probably because he just did a bit of a cycle or whatever. But I mean, his body was just so. It's like when Kai Greens apparently from two thousand five to two thousand seven went on, yeah. you know, and then they just like they just it doesn't even look like the same person. So I think I think. I would say odds on. I think he was probably the favorite to win this. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it's, it's um, yeah, I, cause I think he's, yeah, he's, uh, and I'm happy to see him back. Um, and I hope he does do the Olympia this year. If he qualifies. He better. Come on, Keon. Yeah. Oh. You can't skip two Olympics. You can't be doing that shit. No, can't be doing why, that. why would anybody do that? Unless you're, unless you tear a peck or something, why would you do that? Mm. He's young. Maybe he figures, well, I got time. Cause he is only, geez, I think he's only like 20. He's still 20, 25, 26. Wow. Oh, he's still wow. a very young man, but yeah. Keon, I love his symmetry. I love, he reminds me of that frontal bicep. It's very Terry Pastel. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's so <laughs> round. Everything's just perfectly round. He, it's all another, he reminds me in a lot of ways of uh, Flex Wheeler, Sean Clarita, just that real round fullness to the muscles. Uh, but another guy I just had on wrong line with his wife, who's doing, wellness john jewett john is looking crazy right now crazy um you know he's up against keon it's not going to be easy for him but john is very very consistent and he's a condition king he's he's one of the few guys that represents that 90s type of condition that we used to see back in the day that we don't see a whole lot of these days so he's carrying on that tradition and man uh, I, i'm i'm curious to see how he's going to match up against keon because they're very very different different physiques well, he doesn't have to win this to get through to the Olympia, surely, because I think because he's had thirds and yeah. a couple of thirds, he's probably got enough points to get a second or third here and he'll get through to the Olympia because I know he's very high up on the point standings. Yep. But the things with John, I mean, the last couple of times he looks, don't get me wrong, he looks absolutely incredible on stage, but something goes wrong from those pitches a few days out to what we see, even the shot, shots of him two days after. Yeah. When he's in the gym, he does look, and I'm, I know people will say, oh, yeah, but they always do. No, they don't, actually, no. because when you see him on stage, his chest really kind of flattens out. and his, So he, if he can come, I, I almost think he maybe pushes the that final stage. I think he pushes it too hard because the last couple of shows he's done, he's not looked like he did at the 2019 Olympia when he took fourth. Right. You know, right. he really, so if he could come in with the fuller, 
with I, I don't know. I don't want to say what I want him to lose some conditioning because he probably no. won't. But I, no, I do no. think he flattens out somehow. I don't know why. But if he can rectify that, then he will give Keon hell. But I still, I, I mean, I, I think, I, I think he'll be second. In all fairness, I think yeah. he will. But I think that if that's still got, if that's good enough to get him through to the Olympia, then that's that's great for him. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of John and, and, and Renee. I love them. I think they're lovely people. Yeah, we in our interview we spent a lot of time talking about that fullness issue because. Oh, did you? Yeah, because you know, we, we, you and I, we have to be very critical. That's our job. We just can't tell everyone you're perfect. You're the best. He loses the pop. He loses the pop. Yes. So he's been working on. I don't know what his exact strategies are, but he's he's trying to figure out exactly how to be how to show up fuller because that's you're right. I see him on Instagram and then I see him on stage and I'm like ah, uh, that's not not as full. The pop is not there anymore. And if he has that, he's going to give Keon a good fight. I want a good fight. I. I don't like seeing, even like all those years, Ronnie was just walking on stage and the show was over. <laughs> it was cool. You know, wow, he's 295 pounds, 290, but it wasn't exciting because like you already knew the winner. Those years, yeah. Dorian used to walk out and was like, okay, well, we know Dorian won. Let's see who can give him second, third, and fourth. If if John rectifies that fullness issue and brings his normal trademark conditioning, his incredible presentation, mm -hmm. do you think he could beat Keon? I don't know. If, if Keon... If Keon keeps the look that I've been seeing on Instagram these past couple of days, mm. uh, I, don't know. I don't know. He's got a beautiful physique, beautiful physique. It's so it's much. Like, it's like Dorian versus Flex Wheeler, isn't it, in 212? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I would never say that it's impossible. It could happen. We'll mm. see. And I'd like, to, I'd like to see it really go down to the wire where it's last call out is just those two and they're just worked the hell out of them. But I don't want to take anything away from a couple of, there's a couple other guys I want to mention. Very good. Jason Lowe. Yeah, Broku. Mm -hmm. uh, he's made some very, very good improvements. He was uh he turned pro in classic. He was a former classic physique uh, pro, and he's put on a lot of good size. Uh, last year, he was second at was New he York. second at this one too? New York, York to uh, to Bo Lewis, and I think he was third. He was in this show too. I think he did Chicago last year too, and he was a top top three or something. But very hard working young guy, very consistent. Uh, we'll see how he does, uh, and also. Oh, hang on, sorry. Can I comment on on Jason? Do you know Do you know what I've noticed about Jason? He's what what makes him the opposite of ninety nine percent percent of people on Instagram. Hmm. It's like when you see a girl on Instagram and then you meet, you see, bump into him at a show, and you're like, okay, you're using filters, love. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing with Jason is he looks. If when you see him doing his like his, his progress picture, because he posts a lot of progress pictures, he tags MD, and I always reshare them. Yeah. And. He kind of looks like, oh, he's good physique, he's good condition, nice balance, nice symmetry. But I'll tell you what, I was really nicely surprised when he came on stage and he was next to Bo at the New York Pro last year. His physique absolutely comes, it's a stage physique. It absolutely, it, it just looks completely different. His lines, his physique, his, his symmetry, his conditioning, his detail. But if you look at the actual progress pictures, you're just like, mm, okay, whatever. I'm not blown away, but I am blown away by what he brings to the stage. So yeah. I'd be very, very shocked if this guy was not top three. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a good point you make because 99% of the people you see him on Instagram leading up to the show, and you're like, oh my gosh, nobody's beating that. And then you see him on stage, like, huh, a lot of people are going to beat that today. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not that's not what I saw on Instagram, and yeah, because. On Instagram, as we've said, people find the very here's the here's the back corner. I do this, so I'm guilt, I'm very guilty of this. There's a spot in my gym where there's a skylight and there's this light bouncing off that wall, and you know it, it, it's it's an illusion. It really is. And the stage stage lighting is brutal. That's why when people see a lot of the contest pictures, they go, "Wow, everyone was out of shape because they're used to seeing the filtered, sharpened, structured pictures." And then when you see the live stream or you see the you know the pictures from from MD or NPC News you don't have that that advantage of the perfect lighting. It's stage lighting is brutally hard. It has to be because you need to light up a whole stage full of people for an entire giant room to be able to see. So, so be, be like Jason, try and make yourself look worse in your progress picture. Ah. Jamie the Giant said that to me and he says, he said, guys, he says, I do my, my pictures in the morning when I'm fasty, when I'm flat. Yeah. He says, and I mean, you know, I've got my bloody shorts on or whatever, and I'm just, you know, and he, and outside in the backyard with the, the, the toilet in the background. He says, yeah, it was... look worse, not don't try and make yourself look better and then be let then disappoint people. Right. Yeah, that's you know, it's a it's a, it's an old cliche, over prom over under deliver, over under do, under promise and over deliver. Because then people aren't expecting much. And then when you show up looking phenomenal, like, oh my God, holy yeah. crap. 
you know, that's what you want. You want people to be really blown away when you walk out there, not disappointed. That's, and that's, you know, unfortunately it happens a lot. Uh, and Kareth Bajo from Connecticut, he's been, geez, he was second place at this show a couple of years ago. So he's, he's no joke. Good guy. He's done, I, well, at the Pro. He's done really well at the New York Pro. And what did he get a couple top, of years ago? He was top, top three, I believe he was second or third. Yeah. He didn't win, but he was up. He was right up there. Yeah, he's another guy. I don't, you don't hear much about him. And he's not a name most people are probably familiar with, but he's been, he's been very consistent. I don't think I've ever seen that guy out of shape. Um, so other divisions, I'm not familiar with a lot of these names. Classic had a lot of guys in it. The only name I recognized was this uh, Russian guy I follow, young guy, Dmitry Vorotsnyevsk. God, there's a lot of T's and S's together in this guy's name. It's T-N-T-S, all together. How, do you, how are you supposed to pronounce that? Anyway, Dmitry, with a V, Vorotsnyevsk. Uh, I had him as a favorite for one of the shows we did a preview for uh, earlier in the season. Then he came out with no tan, very, very light. And he needed to drop another 10 pounds. So if he sorts that out, I think he's, he's got a hell of a physique. I don't know what the heck was going on at the show. I think it was Indy. Was it Indy? Anyway, uh, men's physique, big, big lineup, as always. Best name in men's physique. So I'm going to have him as my favorite. Ramsey's Rams. <laughs> that, that's his real name. <laughs> Ramsey's Rams. That's a great name. Ramsey's Rams. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from fitness, didn't recognize a ton of the names, but Anna Chisholm from Tennessee. She's very good. Oh, I got a favorite for you in bikini. You ready? Laura Lee Chapados. Yep, we love Laura Lee. We love her. Uh, so we just had her on, uh, Kevin just had her, Kevin Leveroni on his show that we do. He just had her on as a guest. And uh, I thought she was already qualified because she was fifth at the Olympia last year. Mm -hmm. But because uh, the, the way the rules are, if there's more than 25 pro shows in any division, then it drops down to only the top three from Olympia qualified, something like that. So she had to qualify somewhere. She picked this one. So she's definitely a favorite. Definitely. I mean, she's been, she was second at the Olympia. I think it was 2018. Mm -hmm. And she's got five pro wins. Figure, uh, recognize a couple names. Sandra Grajales from Mexico, Donya Jackson. Uh, if there's anybody you want to mention, jump in anytime. Um, women's physique, didn't recognize a lot of the names, but uh, that, that's a great division. And wellness, didn't recognize a lot. Of, these are all new. Wellness is obviously the newest division, so we don't. What? What'd you say, Renee yeah. Jewett? Yeah, Renee. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great? Because I was talking to Brett Wilkins, uh, Wilkin, <laughs> about um, uh, the, the the couples being at the Olympia. Like, so if say Brett qualifies for the Olympia and Ivana gets the Olympia, then and you could have John and Renee Jewett if they both get the Olympia. I know it's a lot of a lot of a lot of ifs at the moment, but. Um, yeah, so I'd I was really interested to see how Renee does because I think she's got huge social media following and she's very oh, popular. I mean, so I would love to see her kind of get through to the Olympia. It'd be very, very cool. And John, of course. Of course, yeah. I mean, there's, so that's two husband-wife couples in this show that we know of so far. There might be more. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm not familiar with a lot of names. The, uh, the only names I'm really familiar with, they've already, they're all qualified. The, you know, Angela Borges and uh, Yurish Nayala, they're done until the Olympia because uh, they're well qualified. It's probably going to be another season before we have an established group of like five or six. These are our top, these are the top wellness pros. Yeah. You know, it, the it, Olympia. I tell you what, some of the girls are coming through them. Like, I mean, Yurishna and Bulges and uh, uh, Giselle and the girl that won um, the other weekend. It was just like some of the, I mean, there, there's going to be some stars yeah. in the first year. Normally with a category, it takes two or three years for them to start to emerge. But um, I mean, some of the development of the physique. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to Ahmed Wadani um, in uh, the 212. Okay, yeah, he's, he's done a few. I've seen him a few times before. Yeah, he's, I think he's got probably one of the best front wall biceps in the industry. It's absolutely mind blowing when he hits it. It looks, pho it looks Photoshop, but if you watch the video, it's obviously not Photoshop, but it, it looks like it looks like, like, like a cartoon character. It's incredible. I'd like to see him do really well at this event as well. Now, is he from, don't get mad, Kuwait. Is he from Kuwait? Uh, UK? Hang on, hang on. Oh, you I, don't know. I don't, I don't want to get this wrong. Okay. I don't want to get this wrong. It's, it's on, I'm sure it's on the list. I, I'm not, I don't have the list in front of me, whatever country he's representing. Yeah. Uh, Ahmed. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, the um, El Sadani. Sorry, Ahmed El Sadani. No, Nawadani. Oh, different guy. Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh, boy. <laughs> sorry, that's not the name. I thought it was uh, one. Well, we gave him a, you gave him a good shout out and you said he had the best frontal biceps. So I think he's going to be well yes. pleased with Giles. Come on. What else do you want from Giles, guys? Come on. <laughs> All right, well, um, so yeah, we are going to be doing coverage. We want to let everyone know the play-by-play -play starts Friday morning. 
9 a.m. Eastern. So set your alarms for wherever you live in this country or world or whatever. 9 a.m. I'm going to give people the breakdown of how it's going to go. Make sure I got the right contest. So to let everyone know, uh, Friday at 9 a.m., we're going to do judging for women's physique, wellness, and figure. And there's going to be a little short break. They're going to come back, supposedly at 11, do men's physique, classic, and 212 judging. And then 4 o'clock and 6 p.m., 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. will be finals for those. That's Friday. It's a big show. It takes two days. Saturday morning, 11 a.m. after the end, he does, Tim does an MPC qualifier, a national qualifier. 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern is going to be women's fitness, women's bodybuilding, bikini, and open bodybuilding. So we're getting messaged constantly. You do too, I'm sure. Anytime the show is going, when's Roly coming on? When's Roly? You know, they want to know like what time, yeah. what time can I tune in? I only, I only want to see Roly or I only want to see Hunter. So men's open. If I had to give you guys an estimate, probably about 1230 or 1 PM on Saturday, Eastern standard time, probably when you're going to see the men's open and then 4 PM Saturday, they're going to do finals for everything. We'll be doing play by play. Uh, Giles will be on there. I hope. Yeah. And uh, look, looking at the web, web stream. Uh, I will be there with Milos Sarshev. We'll be doing wrap ups after every Yeah. Milos. Fantastic. Yeah. He's, he's great. I love working with Milos. So Milos is coming to work with me and, um, yeah, we're gonna be do, we're gonna be doing videos, interviews, all that good stuff, previews. Yeah. Can you can you? I, I was thinking about this today. I was, I was actually doing my shout outs for uh, the hot news for Globe Muscle the other day. Yesterday it was. Yeah. And I can't believe you're Tim Gardner. He's he's organized uh, Puerto Rico, Chicago, and then Tampa, and he's got all those divisions and all yeah. those competitors. Yeah. I can't imagine that guy's work schedule and how busy his team are because his shows are run flawlessly. I mean, I went to Tampa, you know, in 2017 and yeah. I've been to some of his shows and they're absolutely incredible. So how, I, I don't know how this guy does it running, having three pro shows on the trot in like a month. It's incredible. He doesn't sleep. I uh, actually, cause I remember it at Tampa one time I saw him and his wife. Oh, what's his Eileen. Eileen. Yes. Thank you. I, I saw him and he looked a little tired. I said, how much sleep you get? You go sleep. I haven't, I haven't really slept in like four days. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that, but yeah, what and he usually, and with most of these shows, it's not just the pro show. He puts on a big NPC show yeah. and uh, a lot of these, a couple of these shows, I think this one, I think this one or Tampa, one of them has a pro qualifier for women's bodybuilding. It's run separately from the rest of the NPC show. And it's the day before. And I think, are they doing it the day before? Cause I've been to it where, the woman turns pro and then she competes later the same day or the next day in the women's Bible. One, one year that she made top five, the new, the new pro. So it's is pretty there, exciting. Uh, is there going to be a master's over fifties that you could jump in the pro show the next day, maybe Ron? Or? Uh, no, no, no. Well, I'm not a pro. That's a big, that's, that's the main I'm problem with that. Yeah. In the amateur, then do the pro the next day, maybe. Or? Yeah, definitely. Oh, I should let everyone know that there is a web stream and uh, it is, it is going to be Tim Gardner productions. You can get all the information about that because not everybody can make it to Atlanta for the Chicago pro. Let, I hope this is all rec, This is all sorted out next year. We can have every show in the city it's named after. Not Tam, everything's not going to be in Tampa or, or uh, whatever. But uh, Tim Gardner Productions, Tim Gardner Productions for the pay-per-view. Uh, you can be there because if, if you can't make it there, you'll definitely want to be glued to your computer screen or your phone or tablet or where the heck you watch stuff on. So you can watch all that stuff on your TV, can you? Yeah. Do you know what I do? I did for um, Portugal last weekend. I put it on the laptop that we use to do this, the interviews for uh, Global, nice. and it because it's linked up to the TV. So we put it onto the TV, so we can and we pull the curtains around, <laughs> like have watching our own little theatre. You know, the, the show is great. It's really good. You have know, some snacks and a glass of wine or something, and I really enjoyed watching the Portugal last weekend. But tell you what, good thing about this whole pandemic thing is that the quality of the live streams have gone to a level now that they're really enjoyable to watch. I mean, the Olympia um i mean portugal I've, I've watched loads now and they're fantastic i mean it's, it's it's not quite as good as being there but i tell you what it's not bad for the fans and but, you know with the, the multiple camera angles they're fantastic so you know big up to the uh, the promoters for kind of putting these on and they are worth the money because you have a really really good time watching these shows yeah and you know we we said it before but, but you know, these promoters most of them took a huge hit last year huge and they're still taking hits in places where they can't have full audiences a lot of these shows that are, that are happening, they still can't have full audiences. They're still social distancing. So it's very limited capacity seating. So yeah. it's a good thing just to be able to support the promoters and, and the, uh, the contest to pick up, the, get the pay-per-view guys. But uh, of course, musculadevelopment.com. Don't, don't go anywhere until you've gone there first, I should say. <laughs> <laughs>
you got that we have all the contest photos going up the play by play where I do my instant uploads thanks to the team behind the scenes helping me get those up posted but uh, I'm able to you know with modern technology I'm able to get stage photos albeit with an iPhone but still you know I have good seats I'm up there I'm right up front so I get some pretty good shots sometimes guys so check that out noble form is going to be a play-by-play -play for Chicago Pro and uh, you'll be piping in there all the way from UK I'll be doing, um, I'll be trying to get hold of whatever they the, the, for competitors in the days after, and uh, I'll be doing probably reviews and stuff from the live stream a few days after awesome. once the embargo is lifted for Globe Muscle. So that'll be in episode 26 out next Wednesday, 9 50 a.m. EST. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, this comes out, uh, this is going to post Friday, I believe, Friday, Friday morning, Thursday. I don't know when it's going to post, but uh, whenever you're watching this, that's when it posted. So, <laughs> Giles, thank you so much for taking the time. It is very late over there for you. It is, what is it, 7.07 .07 p.m. for you? My goodness gracious. So get some rest. You still got to train or you already trained? I'm going to go train now, sir. Okay, go. it's too late. I don't advocate training that late, anybody. But uh, if it works for you, go for it, guy. So, <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for that. I love your insights, opinions, your wit, that dry British humor that you have. So that's it, guys. Chicago Pro happening very, very soon. Check it all out right here at Muscular Development. And we'll see you.